Hi everyone. In the last part of the course, we're going to talk about hypothesis testing. Uh, how do we draw conclusions about population parameters, such as these guys? Remember them? A population mean, a population standard deviation, a population variance, or a population probability or proportion. Uh, and later on, we'll also do tests regarding relationships between variables. And we're going to draw conclusions based on sample statistics that we gather from sample data. In lesson 32, we're going to talk about hypothesis testing using p-values. Uh, there are other methods, but we're going to focus on the p-value approach first. And we're also going to talk about the issue of what it means to be unusual. In fact, the measure for that is alpha, the significance level, which we'll define later on. Actually, alpha is one of what you could say will be three ingredients to a hypothesis test. What are the three ingredients to a typical hypothesis test? A null hypothesis labeled H sub zero or H naught, sort of a, a British flavor to that. H sub one or H sub A, which represents the alternative hypothesis. See? null and alternative hypotheses, and also alpha, which is going to represent the significance level. We're going to meet him formally in just a moment. We've seen him before. Uh, it was the complement of the confidence level before when we did confidence intervals. We're now going to meet alpha officially when we talk about significance level. And again, that's the measure for what it means to be unusual. And p-values basically measure how unusual sample data is under a null assumption. Okay, so let's go through all this in greater detail. Once again, a null hypothesis denoted by H sub zero or H naught is an assumption that calculations are based on. Because uh, given sample data, what are some key numbers that we're going to derive in order to make judgments about the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Well, in order to make calculations, we are going to assume that the null hypothesis is true for now, and we're going to base calculations under the assumption that the null is true. What's an example of a null hypothesis? The coin is fair. That's going to be a common example for a null hypothesis in our class. The null hypothesis will often say that the magician's coin the coin that David Copperfield gives us is in fact fair. And we can base calculations on that assumption. Now in a hypothesis test, we're going to decide one of two things. This is literally the decision. The decision. It is part of the hypothesis test. You need to make a decision as to what you're going to do with the null hypothesis. Are you going to reject the null hypothesis? Or are you not going to reject the null hypothesis? In some ways, you can sort of think of this as guilty versus not guilty in a jury trial. We'll talk more about that. Uh, now, in a jury trial, you never say that a defendant is innocent, right? There might be some evidence against a defendant, but you never say in a jury trial, this defendant is innocent. Yes, there is a presumption of innocence. That's a bit different. But it is never a verdict in a jury trial that you say that someone is innocent. Likewise, we will never accept the null hypothesis. We will never accept definitively that the coin is fair. Here's an idea, and I'll expand on this later. But here's the idea. Let's say that you flip the coin that David gives you, and it comes up heads 51 times out of 100 flips. So you see 51 heads in 100 flips of a coin. We don't know if it's fair or not. Now, it's possible that you might not reject the null, right? It's possible you might not reject the null. Uh, you may not reject the idea the coin is fair, but you're not ready to affirmatively accept it either because based on this sample data, what's the most likely probability of heads? It's not 0.5. It's 0.51. <laughs> We're just saying this could be chalked up to sampling error. So again, we never accept the null. 
uh, he's, here's another example. Let's say that uh, you're, uh, when we can go out to bars, public places, you're at a bar uh, and someone comes up to you and says, hey, I'd like to go on a date with you. Uh, and if you say, oh, well, uh, I'm, I'm not ready to reject you yet. I'll think about it. Uh, how would you feel if the other person says, thank you for accepting? Thank you for accepting my proposal. <laughs> That's not quite what you mean. All right, more on that later. So basically, we live in a world where either the null hypothesis is true or the alternative hypothesis is true. Again, we denote this by H sub 1 or H sub A. It's your choice. And this will serve as the complement to the null hypothesis. You can think of the alternative hypothesis as everything that the null is not. So if the null says the coin is fair, the alternative says the coin is not fair or is biased. I'll put that in red. <laughs> so here the alternative is saying the coin is not fair or it's biased. And again, we live in a world where either the null or the alternative is true. We're, e we're either going to reject the null or we're not going to reject the null. And although we never accept the null, we do sometimes accept the alternative. We sometimes accept the alternative. Uh, for example, if a coin comes up 99 heads in 100 flips, we're ready to really dump the idea the coin is fair. And we sometimes accept the alternative that the coin is not fair. So in the hypothesis test, we decide to do one of the following. Based on sample data and based on that elusive alpha I've told you about, based on the significance level as well. So based on the sample data and whatever alpha happens to be, we're going to reject the null hypothesis, in which case we accept the alternative, as I just said, if we have 99 heads in 100 flips. We sometimes accept the alternative, even though we never accept the null. Uh, and, then, and one way to remember this, we sometimes accept the alternative, we never accept the null. The null never gets love. The null never gets love. I'll really emphasize that. The poor null. <laughs> the null never gets love. We never accept the null. We never accept the null. We sometimes accept the alternative. Because we're a bit too skittish. Okay. I mean, even if the coin came up heads 50 times out of 100, we're still a bit skittish uh, about saying that the coin is fair. Because what we're saying is just, is just that we might be open to sampling error. When we're, uh, uh, when we're not rejecting the null, we're just saying that we're open to sampling error. When we don't reject the null, all we're saying is that we're open to sampling error. The null never gets love. We never accept the null. So we either reject the null or we do not reject the null. We never accept the null. The null never gets love. So next, we're going to play a little game to help us think about p-values and then values for alpha. Uh, 